Today's talk is entitled The Healing Circle and the Aura. Um, I wanted to bring these two things together because of uh, a collection of data we gained um, over 10 years ago. I have put it up on other videos, but I uh, wanted to try and describe it in a better way and also on slightly on its own so people can try and understand um, uh, the, the the circle um, its healing potential and, and how it relates to an aura uh, a lot of this is um, you know putting a, a lot of no known bits of science together um, maybe these pieces of science shouldn't be put together uh, but under my research, um, string theory is not quantum. Uh, when string theory uh, stops uh, its activity solely in the quantum, things, metaphysical things that the ancients talked about become a reality, such as serpents in the sky and fiery serpents and all those things that I've talked about. And of course the ancient megalithic builders knew this because they saw this string theory energy um, when the earth had a higher magnetic field. So I'm going to start um, with the ideas of Stonehenge and uh, recent research is uh, suggesting that uh, these were places of healing, Stonehenge and um, you know why would that be uh, the burials that surround these places have been ex ex excavated and uh, they weren't indigenous to the majority of them weren't indigenous they were traveling from outside of the area some from Europe some, uh, obviously they've done the tests on strontium-90 on the teeth of the skeletons that are buried in these mounds. And they were, it was as though they were coming to Britain to use these energy centers, or at least uh, to be using the, uh, the stone circles for healing. And so... Um, Many people know of this uh, energetic effect of these stone circles. Uh, many people who've, who've studied them, um, been in them, um, will know that they they get certain effects many times of uh, I've been in these circles and my camera has shut off. Um, We've recorded stones firing um, bars or rods out of the top of them. And we've also recorded those same bars entering into people. So this is a, an unseen energy. But of course you need, a, you need some sort of um, framework in which this can happen. Anyway, I... Um, this... Uh, I put a series of photographs together and a little bit of uh, history about these these healing properties of the stones, and uh, later on I will uh, describe uh, how I believe that this could work, and how uh, further investi investigation needs to go on about it. So the healing properties of this say men and tall, known as Crick stone, according to the 18th century. Uh, so sufferers of pains in the back and limbs were cured by crawling through the hole. Also children who are suffering from rickets um, and bone growth would be cured after passing three or nine times through the hole, usually against the sun's direction. So these are, these are now you can say, oh, well they're mythology. And uh, science has its own mythology as well. Um, anyone who wishes to uh, criticise these things need to um, 
understand that a vacuum doesn't exist. So you know they can they can um, ridicule these ideas, but they got some ridiculous ideas as core science. Um, a similar practice was uh, uh, Tovel and Stone. You know, you pass one from one side to the other. That, not, that was an 18th century uh, graving, engraving. So, for years and years and years, people have understood that these megaliths had a healing property. And um, if you have a look at the the word ley line, um, um, it, it it was described in an old uh, uh, dictionary that I had. Obviously, it changes over time. Uh, mythico, uh, myth, myth, mythology, a uh, mythological, a mythological energy field where megalithic stones stand on. And so we're talking um, a source of energy that runs through these standing stones and multiples of them. And we know that the Earth is a spinning magnet. We know that it produces energy fields. Um, and so for thousands of years, uh, the Earth grid or the Earth electromagnetic field has been understood. And so the megalithic stones have been placed on an energy field that we no longer can can report or see or test because the magnetic field is so depleted. Uh, in this picture I've just put up one of the uh, uh, ley lines um, centers. Uh, the, the picture, uh, the map is my drawing of how I map these NG fields. Pretty rough. Um, but the world uh, electromagnetic field, or whatever it is, has been passed down for thousands of years. And it is an understanding that science doesn't want to exist. It doesn't, it, it, you know, it just denies. Uh, but then if you spin a magnet, you get fields of energy. There are places on the planet where planes do not fly over because of the amount of uh, electromagnetic interference with its navigation um, nav navigational GPS uh, e equipment. And so they avoid these areas. So they know that these areas exist. You know, it's just it's just not common common knowledge. And pulses from the Earth's magnetic field can cause problems in navigation. So, even even um, uh, we have evidence of this this electromagnetic field and how it was used to map the world. So. Uh, the Piri Roisy map, um, which was drawn in 1513, shows, you know, accurate mapping, or reasonably accurate mapping, that we could only we could only probably achieve a similar in the 18th century. But um, the notes on this map su suggest that this map has been brought together by many older maps dating back to 400 BC. Now what they show is the magnetic centers and what they've mapped everything from, well this is my take of the map, is they've mapped everything from these magnetic centers, these magnetic ley lines, and been able to scale from the magnetic ley lines. We have to use time degrees and time from GMT in fact. So 
took a longitude and latitude. They didn't use it like that. They used it from the magnetic centers and these magnetic bands that they understood and could map them in relation to that those points of ma where that magnet those magnetic anomalies occurred. And in fact, they uh, they show the um, Arctic free of ice. Now uh, that means that uh, it could be a damn sight older. You know, and, and then we have to go back and say, well, when, when is the earliest time that they could have seen the coastline and, and drawn it? And we have got maybe tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of years. You know, unless science engages with something like this. You know, all our mysteries are just going to be, are just going to be ridiculed. I mean, if, if, you know, science just wants to ridicule all these things. So anyway, so the understanding of a ley line is a megalithic stone. It stands on, um, it stands on these intersections of energy. And so what I've done is I've um, put a, a little drawing together, dis show, displaying two magnetic fields meeting at the base. Uh, there is a flow direction of the first field. As the energy flows through it, it will throw through the stone. So now we have a pulse from the planet, or from the electromagnetic field, that is that is running through the stone in a wave-like structure. A wave of electrons or, um, ma or particle that is running through the stone, exiting the stone, so rising up through the stone, creating a field of energy in the stone. And when the secondary field meets the first one at its base, runs through it and causes spin within the stone. Spinning electrons, charge, whatever you want to call it. Because these things have to be defined. They have to be defined as are they electrons and people need to do the science on it. And they need to do it properly because otherwise we're just missing a chunk that is so important which is what our ancestors were really doing. As our magnetic field, uh, as these energy fields or magnetic fields meet, they create uh, a pressure or a wave in the stone, and the stone starts to glow. Now, a lot of people looking at this would say, "Oh, well, that stone is just flashback," but. Um, I will now sh shortly show you the data of what we captured 10 years ago. So what is happening, uh, just to give you an, an example of it, is a wave is running through the stone, rising up through the stone, and this occurs not all the time. So science can't get this all the time. You can't get this effect. In fact, you would need to wire it, or you know, for any trace of fluctuation of energy within those stones, and use the best best equipment that you could. So I'm going to describe this now. Uh, we we sat on the floor uh, of a stone circle, and we started to take photographs of a shining stone. We took in a sequence over 50 images. So there's an aura over the top of the stone and out of the stone you could see these particles firing out the tip in the flash of the camera. So you get two flashes of the camera and the, you could see them moving very, very quickly from the tip of the stone. And of course, you've got the stone alongside it, which is in focus. And all the time we were watching these stones. Now, this took five minutes to film. But what we did notice was, is that John, who was with me at the time, 
put his hand near the stone and started to conduct energy out of his own auric field whatever interaction it is needs to be done so during this process you put your hand over the stone and it's glowing the stone is glowing the stones alongside it are not glowing and I told him to put his hand on the stone and it stopped now I show this to camera people and they go oh, well, uh, 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 and, you know and they all flash back this that and the other or, and it stopped twice and put two hands on it you take them off and it starts glowing again so this wave function or energy function that was causing the stone to fire now I put these in the video and they were these photographs were about six seconds apart and this isn't this isn't even five minutes you know and then it would get, occasionally the stone would switch itself off but you can see the one stone glowing you can see the other stone not glowing it's slowly dying off it so the pulse effect is slowing dying down it comes back you know that's the stone next to it you know I just change position slightly still slightly glowing you know oh there's no no effect the other stones aren't now you could say oh well it's just because you're closer to the others or whatever but we've seen it when we put our hands on it stop and then it's slowly stopping just come back again and so this is um, this is just a process that the ancients understood you know that the scientists just deny that any of this process is going on you know they draw they drew the stuff that was being that fired out of the tip of the stones in their rock art you know so to me that uh, whilst they want to deny you know there's no evidence for it the evidence is these stone circles and mounds and all sorts of things that are um, yeah, drawn throughout the throughout the world are reporting what the ancients believed as prana or chi or life force or the energy force there are different types the different ways that it works um, and that is the firing out of the tip of a megalithic stone so what I want to do is um, describe what we use in in science we use semiconductors and the crystal lattice is uh, how the semiconductor currently works I think and lattices occur these um, crystal lattices occur in, uh, and they're or orientated to a certain direction um, they don't know why that they, they occurs in sedimentary rocks so those sedimentary standing stones and a lot of these standing stones are, have quartz in them as well have the potential to do this you know we created an industry you know and yeah it, the, the ancients didn't know about you know semiconductors you know or what also happens on these semiconductors is a spin charge color separation and this is where we get the aura so you get different particles that are emitted in different colors the colors are fixed and so we come on to the aura so we have the crystal lattice in the um, or the or the lattice of crystals orientated within the standing stone we have a semiconductor crystal lattice and then we come to the, the what the ancients believe in is auras and the subtle body now um, this is a provisional Wikipedia I think it is uh, the biological unit a protein crystal is an orderly three-dimensional array of protein molecules held together uh, the crystal by definition can be divided into identical unit cells and the array of unit cells is called a lattice now it may not be that it's it's uh, um, the same type of lat it's a biological lattice rather than uh, a material lattice but you know, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know how you would define the differences. Um, you know, one living, one non-living. Is everything living? 
I mean, the ancients believed that everything, that everything, the atom, uh, was an expression of everything. So we have a biological unit in the body, and uh, here we have a picture of um, uh, energy workers. Uh, people aren't going to believe that this is a piece of rock art. I know the people have said, "Oh, you coloured in pictures of." people on a stone and took a photograph of it. Unfortunately, these, or fortunately for my date, depending on which way you want to look at it, but people looking at it are just going to dismiss it. They're going to say, oh, those are stick men painted, you know, the other day. They may well have been painted in the last 10 years. That photograph is from the Scandinavian Rock Art Society, where they send specialists in to paint the holes that were carved thousands of years ago. So the reason why it looks modern, you know, is because it, 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 where they've carved out of the stone the picture, they've painted it so they could photograph it. They even have orbs or uh, attaching to the feet. And uh, my data supports some of that stuff. And my data supports the orb or the energy field attaching around the hand as they drew 4,000 years ago. And still people won't wake up. Still people don't believe that there is a thing called an aura. If you if you went to a scientist and said there was an aura, they say, Oh no, there's no no mechanism for it. Well we got Chris we got structures, lattice structures and proteins. You know, we got we that that wave function that I showed earlier on is of a molecular bio, biological modelling of how signal is sent through cells as above so below and so we you know we we have this ancient rock art and here's just some more of it so we've got uh, the hand you know taken in sequence these are a sequence set of photographs I changed my hand over this is the to show which hand is, you know, is conducted. The, the, the ancients believed there was a charge on one hand being positive or negative, and and on on the opposite. So the sequence and I, the sequence of six photographs, I changed my hand. And actually, you know, you can see the scaling of them. Was, you know, similar distance from them, and so we've seen this in the stone. The aura and, and the energetic field is um, is a reality, and um, those Bronze Age rock carvings prove it. Prove it to me. Um, you're never ever going to get science on board. And so this, uh, I concluded, this is uh, an output from my hand. I was working with energy at the time, and there's other energy work uh, videos on my on my. Uh, uh, um, YouTube account anyway and it's an output of energy from the hand no different than the output of, of energy from a stone so what you're doing is you're picking up energy from the environment, the earth um, I prefer to pick it up from from the earth field itself some healers choose to use the spirit world. Um, I think that should be avoided. Uh, you can use the stars and the heavens. That too is to be avoided unless you know what you're doing. And that is the fundamental of how this energy flows through the earth on fields of energy and certain positions on the earth you can pick that up and use it for healing there is so much I'd like to say about the ego at this point but that is not the purpose of the video uh, many people turn to the mind uh, to work their healing and that is to be avoided. That will get you into all sorts of trouble. Thank you very much. Um, 
hope it makes sense. Uh, I'm trying to convey this uh, mainly because when this is seen, this energy, f this energy that was lost is seen again. I want people to at least be a little bit prepared. Thank you very much. Goodbye.